Right, I popped into Journey Bertiche today, my LGS, and uh, picked up a, a few cards. So let me show you what I got and tell you why I got them. First up, Flare of Fortitude. Uh, I really got this because I like the art and I thought it would be a cool effect. <clears throat> so two, two, two colors, white, white, <laughs> two and two white. Instantly sacrifice a non-token white creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. And instantly until in a turn, your life total cannot change and permanence you control became hexproof and indestructible. I don't know what deck I'm going to put this in. I thought I knew. And I realize I don't. So maybe I'll put it in Brago. I'm not sure, but it's pretty cool. I like this this heart a lot better than the uh, the set card. The foil is expensive though. So anyway, I got one of those. I got two green slime. Green slime, you can foretell it. You can spend two and then throw it away in exile. And then when you feel like it, you can spend a green to cast instead of paying three, which is the same. You know, you pay two now, one later. Or you just pay three now. So it's the same. Oh, what does it do? It's a 2-2 ooze with flash. It's a flashy ooze. And when it slams into the battlefield, a counter target activated or triggered ability from an artifact or an enchantment. If that permanent ability is countered this way, blow it up. The genie used this. He used it pretty effectively, and I thought, wow, that's cool. And he said, you should get some. And I did. <laughs> I got some. They didn't have any foils. I don't even know if this is in foil. I don't know if it's offered in foil. I would think it is. Or maybe it will be soon. Let's keep going. Belladross with a balloon. I got him for Saskia. So Saskia is my token deck. Although thinking about it, I'm not sure if I want to do tokens. Because the idea was I would make a lot of creatures that I don't care about, tokens, in sufficient numbers that I can attack, and most of them will get past my opponent's blockers. Uh, hit somebody and the Saskia would deal that damage to somebody else But you know what? Attacking with a bunch of 1-1s one really is not that impressive. I Tried to put some anthem effects in the deck, but every anthem effect takes away a card that either makes tokens doubles tokens or has some other effect, so it's all It's all a trade-off and, and uh, I know, the deck is going in so many directions, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep with the tokens theme. I'm, I'm really rethinking that, and when I get to the last card, I'll show you what I'm thinking. And it's dirty. So I'm planning to put Billadress Witherbloom here, in instead of, um, it's not Thalia. It's uh, this black-white chick that, when if I would make tokens on any turn... I make those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one black, white uh, ink tokens, spirit tokens. I think spirit tokens are flying. I figured her name because I've never played with her before. I just bought her for the art. And I put her into Sasuke tokens because it kind of fits the theme. And I thought it'd be good. But <clears throat> then uh, Belladros, so he got 7. This other chick, she got 5. She's a 3-4. He's a 4-4 four, four flying. So he costs a lot more, but at the beginning of every upkeep, he gives me a token. She only gives me tokens if I'm getting tokens anyway. Uh, so unless I have a token generating effect in play, she doesn't really do anything. Except look cool. She's got some other ability, though. I think. I can't remember. I really I really don't... I hardly play the cards, and I don't know. But this bastard... They both fly, so he flies and this chick flies. At the beginning of every upkeep, I get a 1-1 one, one pest, which is a 1-1 one, one green and black creature. Whenever it dies, I gain one life. So that goes with the um, wandering, no, illustrious wander glyph. The tender sheet dryad and the white tender sheet dryad. I have a green tender sheet dryad, and then there's a white one that makes artifact creatures. It's the same goddamn thing, it just makes artifact creatures instead of uh, saplings. So if I have Belladros, then I've got three of those. Every turn I get a token effect, which is pretty damn cool. Plus I can pay ten life, 
and then tap all lands I control. But only once each turn. But any turn. So if I instantly need to do something dirty, I could pay 10 life on my opponent's turn, if he's in play, and then tap all my lands. Something to keep in mind. All right. Rainbow Veil. I love this card. I love the picture. I love the old frame. I just like it. So, Sasuke needs more ways of getting her colors that don't hurt too bad, like Shocklands um, or City of Brass or something like that. <clears throat> so, I thought I'd put a Rainbow Veil. I use Rainbow Veil in Icarus Hideki Shidar Kondo, and it's pretty funny. Um, I'll. When I before I play it, or once it's in play, I look over at somebody that seems to be mana screwed, and I say, "Hey, if I tap this for mana and give it to you at the end of my turn, would you tap it for mana and give it back to me on your turn?" Hmm. And if they say yes, we've got a deal, and we keep going. Some of the new players, though, I had to explain why I'm doing this because there aren't any of the lands they've seen that do this, and it's uh, it's kind of neat. Helps them out. So this Defense of the Heart is going into um, Voya. I take Voya's Defense of the Heart and give it to Saskia. And I decided to give this one to Voya because it mentions Curse of the Werefox. And as the rose began to bloom, the Curse of the Red Tooth Keep began at last to wither. So Werefox, uh, this sort of thing, it just seems like it fits Voya better than the original Defense of the well, not original, the Judge Foil Defense of the Heart I had, which looks like two armored Thran soldiers staring you down. It doesn't really fit Voya at all. It doesn't fit Sasuke either, but fuck it. <laughs> so, got an Arcane Signet. <clears throat> I took um, Nekazar's Arcane Signet out. To give it to Saskia so I would have her deck ready for tomorrow so I would have her deck complete meaning he was missing an arcane signet well he no longer is and I think this art with a skeleton weird alien skeletal hand gripping a knife that's pretty damn good for Nekazar so that's his arcane signet now idol of oblivion cube uses this in his squirrel deck and it's pretty goddamn good whenever you make a token you can tap this to draw a card I mean, it's got some other bullshit, and you go do some stuff and get an older run. Who cares? Two mana. It just sits there. No other investment. You just have to make a token. You can draw a card. Sweet. Three visits. So one for Saskia. And one for... I don't know if I got one specifically for anybody else. I do not think I did. I think I just got an extra one because... I knew I won't, would want one for somebody in the future, and now I've got it, so not to worry about it. Arlen Cord, she's going into Voya. I took uh, Elish Norn out of Voya because it doesn't really fit. Saskia, with her tokens, needs Elish Norn a hell of a lot more. So I'm thinking, okay, what can I put into Voya that will really not make him worse than he is, as, as far as more brutal than he is? But what will make him run better? <coughs> He's got 19 elves and 14 wolves. So I thought, okay, I should put a wolf in. I should take out Elish Norn and put in a wolf. Well, then I found out she existed and she can make a wolf every turn. Okay, so either I can have one wolf and it would be a cool wolf that does some cool wolf bullshit when it comes into play or attacks or something. Or I can have this Planeswalker that makes a wolf every turn. And I can give something creature, uh, plus two, plus two, Vigilance and Haste still in a turn. In a deck that I want to smash people and attack people, Trample and Haste or, or Vigilance and Haste is pretty good. And then she flips over. When do I transfer? Okay, so I make a wolf and then I flip her over. So she flips over into this werewolf. And plus one, my creatures get plus one, plus one, I trample a little in a turn. Oh, I'm making big creatures. The Voya, usually when he attacks, everything gets, on average, plus three, plus three. And those are counters. <laughs> those are plus three, plus three counters 
on everybody. So that's usually about what I do. Usually I have three L's by the time he's in play and attacking. And normally I have two other wolves, usually more, but the minimum is two wolves. One of the wolf and Voya, because remember I have fewer wolves than L's. So when he attacks, if I get for every plus one, plus one, in addition to the counters and trample, it's a beating. It's just, although maybe, maybe I want this for uh, Saskia. If I keep the tokens theme, so I make a wolf token, which isn't very impressive. It's, I mean, okay, one wolf token. If I have doubling season, or no interprocession, that's two wolves. So she makes a wolf token, flips over, and then next turn, I can give my creatures plus one, plus one, and trample, but not haste. Mm, I don't know. I, I, I'll put this in Voya and see how she actually plays before I worry about getting another one for Saskia. Or maybe I'll see how she plays and realize it is actually better in Saskia. I don't know yet, but I'm going to find out. Neg one, Arlen embraced by the moon deals three damage to something. Transform her. So she lightning bolts something and then turns back into human. Weird. Uh, neg six, you get an emblem with creatures control, have haste and tap. This creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably pretty good in Voya. Although if I have a bunch of tokens, and again I'm arguing for getting one for Saskia now. So she comes and play with three loyalty. And then if I zero or her, flip her over, she's still with three loyalty. So I would have to do this four times. So that'd be an additional four turns if I want to keep her in play before I hit the ultimate. Mm. Is that going to happen? I don't know. Anyway, I'll put her in Voya and see how she goes. Okay, this is actually Universe of Beyond card. I didn't realize that. I didn't look at the picture carefully on the website when I was in order. Returning with Tij, um, they're moving all of the cards off-site because they need the room for other events and other things. So, <clears throat> on the 16th of this month, they will no longer have cards, single cards, on-site. They will only have boosters and boxes and game other shit. No singles. So you go on the website, you look for what you want. If they have any, you order it. So I saw her. Who recommended it to me? There's this guy that wrote this treatise on my Saskia deck on a Moxfield. When you look at the Moxfield deck, the Saskia deck and Moxfield, if you look at that link, look at the comments and you'll see his name. He wrote this long, like he wrote six paragraphs. And he mentioned Apothecary White. Uh... Order of Trini Retige. Didn't realize she's universes beyond because of that stupid symbol. But, yeah. So she costs three and a white. She's a three, four with vigilance. Whenever I attack, I create a food token for each player being attacked. Okay. And then I can spend a white, tap her, tap X, untap foods I control, and create X1. It sounds like it's really clunky, doesn't it? It sounds like a lot of steps. It sounds like too many steps. But he recommended her, and she was cheap. I think she was only 30 crowns. And the art is cool. I like it. I like the way the card looks. So I thought, yeah, why not? I'll buy one. I'll put her in deck and see how she works. So that's Apothecary White, if you've never seen one before. I hadn't. I didn't know she existed. I didn't look at this Cludio shit. I looked at the dual, at the shock lens, not dual lens. I looked at the shock lens to see what the art looked like. And that was it. The rest of it, I didn't care. Didn't care at all. Beast Within. Uh, two people both have said Mortify and Putrefy are not as good as Generous Gift and Beast Within in Saskia. And they're right. It's not. I just, I like the Mr. Archive Putrefy. I like the um, game day mortify that I had, but eh, it's time to face facts. Having a card that costs two colors, two colors, it costs two colors, 
colors. Uh, and only hits a creature or a narrow permanent class is not as good as something that hits anything. I mean, it's the same CMC. Destroy target permanent, and they get either a beast from Beast Within, or they get an elephant for generous gift. So, yeah, th this is better. I'm taking Mortify and Putrefy out of uh, Sasuke, and I'll put Beast Within a generous gift. Rabble Rousing. The same guy that told me about Apothecary White told me about Rabble Rousing. Rabble, rabble, rabble. So, four and a white. Jam it, hide away five. So, look at the top five cards in my library. Pick one. Exile it underneath this card. Which, if my opponents destroy it, is going to be irritating. That's why I don't play a lot of hideaway things. Because I don't like getting my stuff exiled. I don't. And I don't like making opportunities and inviting my opponents to casually exile my things by putting them under something else. I don't like doing that to myself. But this, uh, and maybe it's May. Maybe I don't have to do it. I don't know, I have to look at the rules. It doesn't have the fucking rules on it. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that many one on green and white citizen creature tokens. So, doubles my creatures. Nice. If I control ten or more creatures, I may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. So, in theory, <laughs> if I have ten or more creatures already, I could cast Rabble Rising, hide away, and just cast whatever's under it for free. You know, that that is a thought. That is a line of play available to me. But I, after I attack, because it says whenever you attack, then, so this will trigger in my second main phase. No, this will trigger when I attack. So I attack with one or more creatures. I create that many creatures. Then if I control ten, so okay. So I have to play it during my first main, hide away, go to combat, attack, have at least 10 creatures on the board after I have declared my attack. Either already I already have the creatures or this gets me above 10 and then I can cast the card. Maybe it'll be Elish Norn. Welcoming Vamp, but this card is so good. Um, and so cheap, this is only 35 crowns, which is about 2.5 euro. Uh, I thought it was more expensive. That's why I didn't get any before. But now, maybe she was more expensive before and her price dropped. I don't know. For, for some reason in my head, I thought she was about a 300 crown card. Anyway, two and a white for Flying Vampire. Whenever one or more of the creatures with power two or less come into play under your control, draw a card once per turn, and she's a 2-3. So I bought one copy. And then on the way home, I'm thinking, oh, shit, she can go into Ikrishadiki Sudar Kondo because their host shtick is the creatures have greater toughness and power, and they've got a boatload of creatures that are power two or less. Um, I'd say two-thirds of the creatures are power two or less in that deck. So... Well, can we vampire would be really good in that deck? She'd be good in Edgar, because every time I cast a vampire, I get a 1-1 one, one token, so she would trigger. She would be good in Aurelia, because of all the goblin tokens I'm making. So whenever I make goblin tokens, I get a card. She's going to be good in this Saskia token deck, because whenever I make tokens, if I don't have an anthem, too many anthems that pumps them over to, I get cards. So when I got home, I ordered two more. Um, I don't want to go crazy and have one in four different decks. I'll have one in three different decks. And I ordered one of the um, uh, showcase versions just to be different. I don't know if I like the frame. The frame is really weird. But usually, after I look at those weird frames for a while, I start to like them. Like Amonkhet. I did not like Amonkhet at first, except for Consecrated Sphinx, because I do not like the original Mirrodin Besieged Consecrated Sphinx. I don't like that art at all. And when Amonkhet came out, and they had that really cool Consecrated Sphinx, bang, bought one, because I liked it. And looking at it, 
I got used to the frame and I started liking the frame. The other almond kit cards I play, the other ones I could afford, or not could afford, but was willing to spend the money to buy. Um, Blood Moon, I've got an almond kit Blood Moon. Uh, I got a Threads of Disloyalty, but I got that just for the art, and I think it because I think it looks cool. And maybe that's it. I did not get a whole lot of them. All right, so this is Ask His Foil Wars. It's not foil. I thought I ordered a foil, but I didn't. Oh, I'm giving something away. I don't want to give that away. So I thought I ordered a foil, but I did not. And I do not remember why. I do not remember now. And I'm not looking at my computer. I'm sitting at the kitchen table. Did I not order a foil because they did not offer foil? Or because it was some raised etched bullshit and I just didn't want it. I don't remember. But anyway, since I ordered it, it must have been intentional that I did this. This is going into Saskia. I like this Dan Frazier art. I don't really like the 8th edition uh, Thor stone where the guy is holding in his hands like this. I don't... This is... Never, never appealed to me. I love the original one, the Quentin Hoover one. Uh, Kenrith has one of those. So when I was looking for Felwar Stone, because it would be so good for Saskia, I was quite happy that they had something else. Because I, I just didn't feel like paying 300 crowns for another dark version. All right. So, I mean, if, if, you, if you saw it, you saw the big reveal. I already gave it away. Uh, I should redo this whole thing, but I'm too lazy to do it, so I'm not going to. Anyway, thanking of Saskia. <clears throat> what is my plan with Saskia? Make tokens and attack. There'll be 1-1. One, one. If I get War Leader's call out, there'll be 2-2. Two, two. If I get Elish Norn, there would be 3-3. Three, three. Of course, my opponent's creatures would get neg 2, neg 2, but that's beside the point right now. <clears throat> Attacking with a bunch of 1-1s one, or even a bunch of 2-2s two, usually is not that impressive. Usually a half of them are going to get blocked and die and do nothing and you've lost a big chunk of your army, a big chunk of the force you've been building up to field. Um, it's to the point where I'm planning to take out War Leader's Call and put Kaya Geist Hunter back in the deck because her plus one is one creature gets a plus and plus encounter which is really random. I don't know why the fuck they did that but they did it did that, and your creatures gain death touch until end of turn. That's her plus one. Because a bunch of one ones with death touch is a bit more impressive than just a bunch of one ones. Maybe they would have Vigilance because of Taser Karloff. Well, Vigilance and Lifelink, but my opponents really aren't going to worry about the Lifelink because they're going to block the shit out of them. So I'm thinking, is this token idea really what I want to do for Saskia? Because the reason, the other reason I'm planning to take War Leader's Call out is I took out Perforos. I did not put in Impact Tremors. I do not want to kill my opponents by just casting creatures and having these static effects, Perforos, Impact Tremors, and War Leader's Call, kill my opponents. I did leave in Terror of the Peaks because he can hit creatures. So I took out two cards. Well, I took out one card that hits my opponents if I cast creatures, Perforos. I did not put another one in at all, Impact Tremors. I'm thinking of taking the third one out, War Leader's Call, because that's not the way I want to win with Saskia. I want to attack. But the tokens, it's much easier to just have Perforos, War Leader's Call, Impact Tremors, Terror the Peaks, and hit my opponents that way. It it's, doesn't take a whole lot of uh, uh, effort to do it. It worked really, really well. And in fact, the, the deck, independently of my desires, did it so well that it kind of let me down. <laughs> and it surprised the shit out of my opponents in a bad way. Uh, Long Pete, he's, you dealt 20 points of damage to me. How? Well, I, I made five creatures with um, increasing devotion and because I have doubling season I got ten creatures and because I have perforos um, 
10 creatures came to play, you lose 20 life. Okay, I'm going to path to exile Perforos. Uh, you can't. I don't have devotion to red. He's not a creature. He's only an enchantment. And he's indestructible. What kind of bullshit is this? Yeah, I know. I know, Pete. It... So that's that. That's how I felt that game. I felt bad. The, the other game she won, I won because I kept sacrificing treasures. I had Smothering Tithe and Anointed Procession out. And I kept sacrificing treasures for mana. And I had Nadir's um, uh, Nightblade. So whenever I sacrificed a treasure or another token, my opponents lost a life and I gained a life. So if I sacrifice eight treasures, okay, each opponent loses eight, I gain eight. And that's how I won a different game. So I'm thinking, I'm going to try Saskia one last time as tokens tomorrow. And if she just doesn't work without Perforos, without World Leader's Call, without these um, other effects, I'm just going to redo her as an evasion deck. Putting creatures with Shadow, uh, Voidwalker, um, Soltari, uh, what the hell is he? Soltari Bastard, he, one white white, he's a 2-2 two, two cleric. When he deals damage, combat damage to an opponent, you can destroy an enchantment they control. Uh, Soltari something. Put those in. Um, flying, trample, other evasion, and just go to town that way. That's what I'm thinking. So, but it's, I bought all these token cards. I bought a shitload of the token cards for Saskia a lot, and I want to use them. So I thought, okay, if Saskia is no longer my tokens deck, who should be? And then I remembered Reaper King. <coughs> so I turned to Reti, he was only 50 crowns. No? Yeah, 50 crowns. <coughs> oh, excuse me, which is about two euros. It's the stupid um, mystery booster printing. So what I'm going to do is ask Ren if he'll paint, this would be cool, paint like three pumpkins here and have vines going up and down. Just just three little pumpkins in the corner to cover up that stupid symbol. I think that'll be cool. So I'm going to ask him if he'll do that for me. And it probably cost about four or five hundred crowns. He charged eight hundred crowns for full altars a few years ago. I don't know if his prices have gone up. I don't know what he would charge to do three pumpkins and some vines. But I'll pay it. So anyway, I got this foil Reaper King. Reaper King. One of each color or two colorless to replace any color. Other Scarecrow creatures, you could all get plus one, plus one. There aren't many good Scarecrow creatures. Not many at all. Whenever another Scarecrow comes into play under your control, destroy target permanent. So if I have Mask with Nexus... And I make tokens. The tokens come into play. Mask with Nexus says, hey, you dudes are scarecrows now. And you're coming into play. What are you going to do? And the dudes will say, oh, um, we're going to blow something up. Yes, blow something up. And I thought, oh, that's going to be so fucking dirty if I do that. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's going to be an Austrusion deck for sure. Because I'll have access to blue for counterspell. Um... I'll have access to black for um, Undying Evil effects to keep Reaper King in play. Beacon of Unrest to get him back into play if he dies. Uh, what? So that's what I'm thinking now, and I'm kind of excited by it. Mask with Nexus. Reaper King. Play dudes. Dudes come into play. They are scarecrows as they come into, when they come into play. And they destroy target permanence. And it doesn't say non land. So in Astrusion, I can be real dirty. I can blow up lands. I don't know if I want to do that. In fact, I'm thinking of having a Dark Shield Ingot just so if I don't want to destroy lands, because it says you have to destroy the permanent. It's not a may. If a Scarecrow comes into play and he's there, he they have to destroy something. So if I have Dark Shield Ingot, then I can have them target that. So they won't destroy the Ingot. I don't have to destroy the lands, but that's what I'm thinking. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fucking dirty. So I'm going to build it, and I'll let you guys know when I do.